Good morning. How are you today? It's a beautiful Tuesday morning, November the 20th in Brisbane, Australia. Where are you today? What's been happening? And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, have you had an awesome Monday? Today, we want to talk about trauma and emotions. My name's Linda and I'm your trauma recovery coach. I do these videos in order that you can develop a language around what's happening for you, in order that we can educate you and you can take the information to your therapist, to your counsellor, to your trauma coach, and so that you can work with them and they can help you devise strategies around how to overcome particular areas of your life. Because if there's one thing with complex PTSD, it is individual and you do need individual strategies. So it's not about having, you know, I was just about to say an ice cream, you know, you know how they've just got this visual vanilla ice cream at, uh, you know, 8.15 in the morning or 8.21 in the morning. You know, it's not vanilla flavoured, all right? Trauma recovery does not come with a one size fits all cap ever. And if you feel like that with your therapist, perhaps have a chat to them about how you feel that it's a bit vanilla flavoured and one size doesn't fit all. And remember, when we eat ice cream, we tend to add things to it like toppings and waffles and sprinkles and oh heck, we even add ice cream into our soda. <laughs> okay, so today, let's have a look at a heart level what's happening for us, all right? So we need to sit down and be prepared to be honest with ourselves. We need to feel comfortable. Well, we're never going to feel comfortable examining emotions until we learn how to do that too. So you can also speak to your specialist about how can I become comfortable with examining what's happening for me at a heart level, all right? So am I attempting logical conversations with people close to me and ending up frustrated, upset, angry? And one of, the, one of the biggest examples of this that I had in my life was trying to talk to my first husband and trying to, you know, relay, look, this is how I'm feeling, this is what I'm seeing and getting no answer. Now, I don't blame him because for generations we've never had the education and the upbringing in how to talk about our emotions and everything I've read by men for men says that it is really challenging for men to get into their emotional centre. It's not something that's natural for them, which it is more natural for, for a female, okay? So, <laughs> poor guy. Because I'd go back again and again and again and I'd feel angry and I'd feel frustrated and I'd cry because I was so upset because I didn't know how to get him to communicate. But for me, personally, that's how I felt with a lot of people too. It's just like, just don't talk because the minute you open your mouth, you're just going to upset them. Okay? It's not the truth. But at the time, when you don't know any better, that's what it feels like and that's what we're aiming for for today is does is this how it feels like for you when you're trying to communicate okay do I spend hours trying to work out what I'm going to say to people close to me or workmates oh I used to spend hours and, and plan out the whole conversation beforehand okay and you know why we do it because we want to feel safe uh, first of all, we have to be the ones that identify that this is what we're doing, planning out the whole conversation beforehand, and how we can go about learning to relax and just have the conversation one step at a time. One thing you can do is actually write down points for yourself, and that's okay. Remember, you're in training how to do this. You're not expected to know how to do this because it wasn't taught to you as a child. And also because we go through, with complex PTSD, we go through a whole stage of learning to reparent as well. Do I find myself not talking because I'm worried I'll make a mistake? I can 
tell you, I can absolutely identify a period in my life when I was around 18, 19, and I used to be in um, a sports team. So I was in a softball um, team. Uh, I was actually in a men's baseball team too. Because <laughs> in Australia, we don't have the population that America does for the vast amount of sports teams that you have. So the only way I was going to be able to play baseball, which I love, was to be in a men's baseball team. Anyhow, at the time, I can look back now at group discussions and see that I would not talk unless I knew I was right. And you know what? I think I drove everybody nuts because I knew I was right. And I wouldn't have a conversation about it. I just knew what I was saying was right because I'd taken all the details together. And learning to communicate is a whole different chat show, okay? Even if we're right, learning to communicate with love is, again, a whole different strategy. And we can learn it. That's the good news. We can learn how to do this and we can also learn how to feel safe to do this. Am I telling myself I'm guilty before I've done anything? Oh, yeah. I've, yeah, I spent too many years like that. And it's not the truth. And this is what we've got to tell us, tell ourselves it's not the truth. Okay? This is a remnant from when I was growing up and it's just not the truth. Okay? But we've got, I've got a whole truth and lies episode that I'll do for you. But today, let's just stick with it's not the truth. Okay? Do I find myself frozen and unable to carry out my day? That happened a lot for me when I was going through recovery, okay? So I was going through the process of reclaiming my life and I'd end up frozen and not able to talk because I was so unsure of what was happening around me. We can end up frozen too when we really, 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 really want to do something and then we can't put the order in place in our brain. We can't get our prefrontal cortex to engage in the logical process. And it doesn't matter how much we know in our heart that there's a logical process. It means that we've got to have strategies devised for us by a professional in order that we can carry out the process as well. Okay, that's the good news. There's always help. And am I repeatedly blaming myself for everything that happens? And in order to identify this, one of the main ways that you can identify this in your life is, are you always saying sorry? Oh, I spent my whole life saying sorry until I had good friends finally say to me, there is nothing for you to be sorry about. But then I had to sit down and work through the logic of why are they saying that there's nothing for me to sorry, be sorry about? I actually had to put that information into my system. So our brain's like the supercomputer and we have to train it. Okay, after we've been through trauma, we have to retrain our brain via experiences in our day-to-day -day life in order that we can go through recovery, we can reclaim our lives. We can get our brain back on track. And that's the good news. We can do this. We can employ exercises into our day-to-day -day life in order that we go through recovery and we reclaim our lives, okay? Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel welcome to ask them. I have no problem answering them for you. Uh, I prefer that you have language around what's happening for you in order that you can take it to your specialist and have a discussion about it. And if you can sit there and go, oh, it finally makes sense to me what's happening, that's priceless. Now, remember when we've come through childhood developmental trauma, okay, and a diagnosis of complex PTSD, our brain actually developed back to front to somebody who hasn't had trauma. So our first reaction, our first response is always emotional, and you get to develop that awareness into your life about when you're having an emotional reaction and there's no logic employed. And that's not your fault. 
it's how our brain developed as a child and it's proven scientifically so it's not your fault okay what we do in recovery is work through the challenges that are presented to us in our individual life and we begin to reclaim our life and understand all the things that weren't taught to us as children. We go through a stage of reparenting ourselves, okay, and learning what that means. And we do all of this. A lot of us do all of this because we have an absolute passion not to pass down all the rubbish from previous generations to ours. And can I just say that if someone from a prior generation says to you, your life wasn't as hard as mine, it's all the choice, they're wrong. Okay? I've had this said to me and, you know, I don't bother responding because they don't have a clue. They think they do, but they don't. When science proves that not only is this genetic, so you can go in and research epigenetics okay and that's the area that we can learn about during this process then the people that are saying this are afraid of learning that they didn't get life right well you know what I mean by right they they don't have the right process going on in their life okay and I want you to understand that your life is so precious that you need to take this time to become heart aware in order that you can go through the recovery process and be successful. What the previous generations think of us is none of our business. It doesn't matter. Sometimes we've just got to walk away because they don't get it. And they're more toxic in our life than they are productive in our life. We'd all like supportive people, but if it's not coming from our family then there are plenty of other people that want to be around us, um, people who love like we do with absolute passion and people who are prepared to do their personal work. No one's perfect. None of us have got it right. And it's we're all a work in progress and that's how it should be. And when you find people around you who are prepared to do the work as well, and it's a very precious place to be in, but we work towards that as well. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please feel welcome to leave them down below. I'm always happy to research information for you to the best of my ability when I've got free time as well. And I want to wish you a beautiful, beautiful day if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, have a gorgeous night. Remember to take your notebook to, you, to your therapist or coach with you and get some personalized strategies okay blessings and dreams and i will see you tomorrow bye for now